Thank you for joining us, guys. All right, we are going to bring up the very first company, which is Robin. And presenting for Robin are two guys who I may have introduced prematurely earlier today. It's Justin Crandall and Bert Lamont. Welcome to Disrupt. You have six minutes. In 1989, the Exxon Valdez spilled 11 million gallons of fuel in Prince William Sound. Every single year, Americans spent, spill 17 million gallons just gassing up their lawn equipment. I'm Justin Crandall, co-founder and CEO of Robin, and today at TechCrunch Disrupt, we are announcing the world's most environmentally friendly, most reliable, and most affordable lawn care service. Now, you don't have to be Snoop Dogg or a resident of Colorado to know that grass is a market with huge potential. But what you may not realize is that the stuff growing underneath your Sounds familiar. You make five phone calls to get one guy to call you back. He tells you that he needs to come over and see your property in person just to give you a price. You finally get on the schedule for three days later, and on the day of your service, you remember you don't have any cash. So you debate running down to the ATM, and you remember that you used to have this thing called a checkbook. So you rummage through your drawers, you finally find the checkbook, you sit there and wait all day for that crew to show up so that you can pay them. But of course, they don't actually show up. Sounds pretty painful, right? This is a very, very typical experience in the lawn care industry. And that's why when we, we set out last year to bring this experience into the 21st century, we launched Robin Lawn Care, where you can go to tryrobin.com, enter your address, and get an instant quote with, with nothing but your address. We then can, you can schedule a crew instantly with the confidence that that crew will actually show up. All payment is handled via credit cards, so you can go ahead and burn that checkbook at this point. And then we ask you to rate the service after each one so that we, only the best crews continue to get jobs from Robin. Customers love this convenience. Since launching 18 months ago, we've acquired more than 7,000 customers and completed more than 70,000 jobs, despite operating in just three cities. And we are operationally break even in those three cities. But all of this growth hasn't been without its challenges. Reliable lawn care still depends upon both human nature and mother nature. A typical crew can handle about 20 jobs in a day. So if it rains for three days straight, or a truck breaks down, or a crew member gets sick, the backlog of jobs is almost insurmountable and service delays happen. And you can't just add a night shift to make this up. With human lawn crews, there is just no way to beat human nature. Now, I know what you're thinking. Robots, right? You're not wrong. Unlike autonomous cars, robotic mowers have actually been around for 20 years, but they present some pretty significant challenges as a consumer product, starting with the fact that they cost anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000 up front. Then you need to install them, which involves burying a wire around the perimeter of your yard, tunneling under sidewalks and driveways, and understanding things like narrow passes, mowing zones, and near wire follow. And then, even if you do all that right and get it working, it still won't edge, it still won't trim the shrubs, it still won't put down fertilizer, and it won't weed. It's an incomplete service. Robotic mowers to this point have not offered enough of a solution to customers to make them worth their while. Until today. Today, at TechCrunch Disrupt, we are announcing the world's first robotic lawn service. A more reliable, more eco-friendly, and affordable way to maintain a lawn. If we can go over to the demo. So we've installed a robot mower here next to the TechCrunch Disrupt stage. My co-founder, Bart Lemon, is our expert technician today. You can see it's a little bit like a Roomba meeting an invisible dog fence. Right? It mowed around the perimeter, then it mows it randomly in the center. If it runs into an object, such as a tall tree, it backs up, changes direction, and continues mowing. These mowers have a remarkable safety record. They, the mower blades will stop within one second if it's lifted or comes up on an angle. 
And environmentally, traditional gas mowers contribute 5% of the carbon footprint of the U.S. These mowers are battery operated, emissions free, and consume just 11 kilowatt hours a month of electricity. That's about two dollars. Right. If we can come back to the slides. So the way our service works is simple. Again, you go to a website, you enter your address, and get an instant quote. We then schedule a Robin Pro to come to your home and install the base, the perimeter wire, and program your mower. We then remotely monitor these mowers to make sure they're operating correctly and then handle any maintenance, including the replacement of blades. The best part about this is that it costs less than a traditional lawn service. So for just $99 a month, your lawn will always be mowed, you will have that reliability, and your lawn will look great. For an additional fee, we can also add the recurring services you need, like edging, trimming, fertilizer. Right? We already have crews in the field doing this. When we, set, when we set out last year with Robin Lawn Care, we set out to put your lawn on autopilot. And today, with the launch of our robotic mowing service, we can finally accomplish that goal, literally. Please visit autopilot.tryrobin.com to sign up for our beta list. Thank you. <laughs> Nice work. <laughs> Judges, who has the first question about the robotic lawnmower? I can go ahead. <laughs> Great presentation and awesome product. I mean, it would have taken me a lot of issues while trying to set it up. The quick question I have is, your, your leasing technology, your providing services, uh, what type of company are you trying to build? A services company, technology company, hardware services? So it's both services and technology, right? So we do need to manage the services behind this, but there is a technical component of monitoring these things and managing. So we can actually predict when the mower is likely to break down and replace the motor during a normal mowing crew visit, as opposed to having to um, you know, send a rush crew out there when it happens. So there's a technology element to this as well. And we're continuing to run a traditional lawn care or Uber for type lawn care business on the side as well, because it doesn't work for every customer. Love the yeah, self-driving cars analogy, Uber for lawn mowing. Um, couple of questions. One, on the tech itself, um, do you use any beacon technology? How do you actually uh, make sure that the navigation happens, and how do you make sure that the boundaries are respected yeah. and so on? What tech do you use? Is it off the shelf? Yep. Um, second question is, on the market itself, uh, drawing the analogy of uh, self-driving, there's a fully autonomous state and a semi-autonomous. How much do you rely on the human percentage of human um, role versus the auto automation? Yep. So this is off-the-shelf technology, and there are a number of manufacturers out there that already produce these mowers. And so we don't want to go create the basic mowing capability. That part already exists. The remote monitoring and how you manage the service around that is where we're going to add the technology value to this. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the second, the second uh, question? The second question is, do you see an on-ramp? How do you see the on-ramp from um, you know, some human oversight plus yep. you know, fully automated? So it, it should be fully automated from day one. It does require the installation, but once you've done that, these things are pretty reliable. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of these operating in Europe already. Go ahead. Yeah. And how are you targeting your, your markets where you're starting geographically? Areas with large lawns, I suppose, would be more profitable and that sort of thing. Yep. So our, and this, this fits with our core business right now. So we tend to target the suburbs of southern cities to start, right? And it tends to be people who make 100000 to $200,000 a year. They can already afford to outsource their lawn care. They tend to have young families and children. Um, you know, and, and they're already paying for this service. In fact, they're probably paying $150 to $200 a month for a mowing service today. And we've targeted them through digital channels, through print, and then most of our customers actually come through referrals. Are the crews you send out for the services the same crews that set up the, I mean, the mower? And not how do the, you train them? Yeah, not the installation. So the installation, will. There's a, you need the knowledge in order to put these things in. They actually are fairly complex to put in. Um, so we will have Robin installation crews that go out and do that part of the job. But then replacing blades or even replacing the mower, uh, or sorry, the motors on them is actually very simple and something that a regular mowing crew can do. If something uh, is running, um, do you need 
anyone to monitor it in case someone steals it or, or yep. you, you need someone to you know, maintain it if some, something goes wrong. How much cost is, is involved in terms of doing that? So the way the technology works is that um, the mower will only work with its base, and then the base is actually tied into a global system. So you can, anytime that base gets stolen, it's unusable. Like the mower is essentially unusable. So you may have some, um, you know, vandalism and things like that, yeah. but it's basically an unusable product if it's taken. And you can also have a security code on it as well. So in Europe, what is operational? Has that been a big issue? No, it hasn't been. So they said initially they did see a little bit because of the novelty of it. Exactly. People would walk off with it, right. right? And then realize, oh, this doesn't work. And now in Europe, everybody knows if you steal one of those things, it doesn't work. But also, all my neighbors have them anyway, so it's not really that novel anymore. But it, Bro, let me ask you this. Uh, from a consumer standpoint, this, that's my, my big question is around the disposal. One of the things I get is the, the, the actual disposal of the actual grass mm -hmm. and sort of a, re, a recycling. Where do you, what do you do with the, the grass so, that's been cut? So the way that these actually cut is they go out and mow just a little bit every day. And so you're only taking a tiny piece of the blade off every single time. It's actually better for your lawn anyway because those break down in the soil and actually help the grass go better. So it's a higher quality cut, but also you don't have this, well, at the beginning of the week my lawn looks good, and then it grows and it gets cut. It's just cut all the time. Why can't iRobot or one of these other robotic lawnmowers do this? Why can't you go buy one? Uh, why can't those guys do what you're proposing to do? They have the units. You're building a oh. service on top of it. So they haven't solved the services side, and they're product companies. Usually product companies don't want to get into services businesses, and so for them to go out and practice the, or, or um, go in and learn to like, set up the install crews for this is just not something they're interested in. We've had, um, you know, We've had four different manufacturers actually fly down to Dallas to meet with us because they're so excited about how this can help them finally break into the U.S. market. So don't view them as potential competitors. They're very interested in partnering. I have another practical question, which yeah. is... Uh, All right, we'll make this real quick. How do you uh, deal with maintenance in the sense of uh, every time this gets used, this condition of lawn changes for different, different houses and stuff. How do I know that there's nothing wrong with this particular house today Then they need to move more? Yep. And you do more work. So we can monitor it, and you can even monitor the, um, the amperage on the motors. So we can actually tell, oh, this one is having to work harder through this lawn today. And so we may need to send out a crew and go, you know what, for whatever reason, the, the homeowner turned it off. It hasn't mown in a while. We're going to need to use turbo mode to get through the, through the lawn. Yeah. Cool. Give it up All for right. Robin. All right. Nice work. Thank you.